We're here at Bournemouth Airport today working in partnership to raise awareness to diabetes around uh, World Diabetes Day on the 14th of November and specifically to focus on the challenges that some people with diabetes face when travelling. I'm Sarah Tutton, I'm the Chief Executive of Diabetes Research and Wellness Foundation. Whenever anyone travels, I think we all suffer with a little bit of stress and anxiety. Have we got everything that we need? Are we doing all of the right things? But for someone with diabetes, 90% of their self-care is, is, is the management of their diabetes. And stress and anxiety can impact on their blood sugar levels in a slightly more impactful way than perhaps for someone without diabetes. So delayed flights, for instance, issues travelling through the um, or navigating airport security, all of those things can impact and cause something called a hypo, a low blood sugar level, or perhaps a hyper, a high blood sugar level. We will be producing a training video for the airport team here, the, the, the staff at Bournemouth Airport, at a later date, and that will really focus on general symptoms, signs and symptoms of diabetes. Uh, it's often referred to as a hidden disability, so it's important people, the, the people working here at the airport are advised of what the signs and symptoms of the different types of diabetes are, and ultimately to recognise perhaps if someone needs a little more time or a little bit more help whilst navigating airport security in particular, where they're travelling with medicines, where they're travelling with wearable de devices and technology that is necessary for their self-management. So really just focusing on those general awareness pieces so that hopefully the team can be prepared, be advised and take some preventative actions or an alternative course of action to support somebody travelling through the airport so that they have a happy and safe journey. My name's Keith Jewett, uh, I'm the Airport Operations Manager. Yeah, so working with the charity um, closely, because I think it's one in 14 people uh, come through the airport with diabetes. Um, now, um, the thing is to recognise that. Um, if, if they have a hypo or a hyper, then um, understand what that means and how we can treat them and how we can help them. Yeah, so one in 14 uh, equates to 60,000 people um, over a year. So yes, there, there is a good chance that um, we can treat and help people with diabetes. My name is Douglas Cairns. Uh, I'm a former Royal Air Force jet pilot uh, diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, age 25. It's a, a very good idea for air, airport staff to be trained um, in, in well, but basically being aware of some of the challenges of travelling with diabetes. So if we do trend higher and if we get very high, then our powers of concentration can be affected. Uh, if you're trending low, to the point of going low on blood sugars, um, there are quite a lot of symptoms that can be detected. Some people may be sweating, a little bit anxious, uh, people can get irritable. So um, you, you could think you've got a slightly irritable person, but there may be a reason for that um, irritability going on at that time if they are actually having a, a low blood sugar reaction. So my name's Claire Levy and I'm from the charity Diabetes Research and Wellness Foundation known as DRWF and I'm also living with type 2 diabetes. So when you're travelling with type 2 diabetes it very much depends on what regime you're on, whether you're on tablets. You may be on insulin as well because uh, it, it can affect you in lots of different ways and for how long you've had it. One of the things I think you have to think about is having all your medications to hand and readily available. It's really important that this airport group are, are recognising the challenges and getting involved. Personally, um, I'm aware that uh, travelling can cause a certain amount of anxiety. You want to get to the airport on time, you want to get through security. So it can actually make your blood sugars go a little bit high. You'll see that in needing to go to the loo more often, you might be very dry mouthed and that's something when you're worrying about liquids these days, trying to get through security if it's a very large airport or, and, and you've got a lot of delays. So coming out the other side, getting through security and managing to get a drink can be really, really helpful. Because if you're feeling unwell or feeling anxious or it's just really affecting um, your day, it's really nice to be able to maybe talk to somebody on the airport staff and say, I need a bit of assistance here, can you help me? Or they might spot it, so if someone's having a hypo going very low, they may not be aware themselves initially and they may be very anxious, they may get a little bit angry, they may appear drunk. Um, so all those things, if someone has an awareness of what type 1 or type 2 diabetes can do to the person, um, it's really, really helpful. 
with type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes, yeah, sure, that can push your blood sugars higher, so you need to be aware of that. Uh, and certainly for me, using a continuous glucose monitor, um, I check it every 10 or 15 minutes as a matter of course, and then you can detect if you are trending high, and for me, I can just top up with a little bit of insulin and try and keep that within a good range. Yeah, so in March, I was diagnosed with uh, type 2 diabetes, um, and it was quite a shock. Uh, so um, I'm living with diabetes now, got used to the medication, uh, got used to the way of life. So um, yeah, it's, it's, um, you can get on with a normal job um, as long as you're careful. In actual fact, a lot of staff are aware of uh, diabetes um, and you know, trained in a medical situation to understand and recognise the signs. The charity has got a checklist, and I've, I've got one here, um, so they can have a look at that, uh, keep it with them at all times and um, yeah they should be okay with that. The other thing is uh, if they are travelling with security have a letter uh, from their doctor uh, so they've got the medication if they're type 1 or type 2 uh, insulin dependent or, or normal tablets um, they can um, tell security so they're aware they've got those tablets for, um, for the treatment. I think people do need to be confident that they can ask for help. I, um, I believe that Bournemouth Airport operate a, a hidden disability lanyard scheme. So it's always important if you're in any way concerned or have any um, uh, um, anxiety around your trip, always check your manufacturer's um, guidance on your wearable technologies, your, your treatments and medicines in advance of your, your, your travel, um, but also to ask the airport staff for guidance or help when you arrive at the airport. Make it known that you have diabetes and might need a little bit more time, a little bit more support as you navigate airport security.